Hello, and thank you for attending this session. We will be listening to Abhi Balikrishnan um, talk about the OWASP Snow Project. He is a senior security consultant with Security Compass. Um, if you guys will notice, there is an option to ask questions to the right of your screen if you're in the Whova app that has been disabled in Zoom. Um, but go ahead and feel free to ask any questions and we will be taking a few minutes at the end of the session to uh, go ahead and answer any of the questions that you have. So um, with that, I will turn it over to Abhi who is ready to present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Thanks everybody for joining. Let me share the screen. I hope all of you are able to see the screen. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a new OWASP project called OWASP Snow. And we will discuss how OWASP Snow can help you active slightly more privacy. There's a reason why I'm saying slightly more privacy because this tool cannot obviously give you 100% of privacy. The website for snow is privacysnow.com. And this is the logo or mascot for the project. The project name is OWASP Snow. A short version of what this tool does before actually getting into the final details. So a short version is Snow is a software version of a privacy screen guard. I hope that gives a high level idea of what this tool is going to do. If you don't, it's okay. I'm going to discuss that in detail in the upcoming slides. All right, the, before going ahead, I have a question. So the question is, you can see a picture on your right, right hand side. Uh, there's a person sitting uh, and doing something on their laptop. Maybe they are checking their emails, social media, or transfer, making some transactions or whatever. And there is a person behind standing and they are looking over there, the sitting person's shoulder onto the screen. And the this, this standing person is performing some sort of an attack. The question is, what is this attack called? Uh, the, you have four choices, A, password guessing, C, cyber stalking, C, shoulder surfing, uh, D, credential surfing. So if you, if you can uh, guess or, uh, or say what's the answer, I, I'll, I'll take a quick look into my whole app to see if I have any responses. Shoulder surfing, that is the correct answer. The standing person is performing a shoulder surfing attack. Now, the second question I have is, what does the letter C stand for in the CAA triad? We all know CAA is seen as one of the core principles of cybersecurity. So what does the letter C stand in CAA triad? Your options are A, continuity, B, consultancy, C, central, D, confidentiality. I'll wait for the answer. All right, so if you have, and said C, confidentiality, that is the correct answer. So shoulder, so shoulder surfing results in compromising confidentiality, one of the core principles of information security, or you can say it affects privacy of the person. So that is the shoulder surfing attack. Now, the second question is like, how can you defend from shoulder surfing attack, right? There, there are lots of different solutions available based on the uh, type of attack. So if, say for example, when you walk into a store and you're purchasing something with your uh, debit card and you have to enter a pin, at that time, you may defend yourself from uh, somebody from stealing your pin by covering the number pad with your hand while typing the pin with the other hand. So that, that is a prevention mechanism. So similarly, there are lots of different mechanisms you can use and we, we, will, we will look at into one of the option. So this is a privacy screen guard. You can purchase them uh, from the uh, from store, like an online store. I think you can go walk into some stores and you can get from there as well. What it basically does is that you, you have a film available. You basically apply that film on your laptop monitor or, or, or phone and that will help you achieve some privacy by limiting the viewing angle. So somebody needs to sit right in front of the screen 
Uh, they have to be facing right, uh, right the screen from the front to actually see the screen. So if you move the phone a little, you won't be able to see the screen, what is going on in the screen. So like I said, there is a mobile version also available. Uh, these are the four main issues when you use uh, these type of physical privacy screen guards. One, you need to spend money. All these privacy screen guards are aftermarket solutions. I haven't seen any mobile phone, laptop, or uh, monitor manufacturers uh, giving uh, these privacy screen guards in their package, right? So you had to you had to go ahead and purchase the screen guards uh, by spending extra money. The second thing is uh, it affects viewing angle. For me personally, that has been a big deal deal breaker because. Uh, yes, I want privacy, but there are some, there are times when I want to say share a video or something and, and watch it together with my friends or spouse. And, and at that time, they won't be able to see what's going on the screen un unless I give my phone to them and they stand right in front of it, right? Uh, or say when I'm in office, if I have a privacy screen card on my laptop, if, if one co colleague walks over and they want to work with me on some things, uh, if they are sitting on a uh, chair next to me, they won't be able to see what is on the screen. So th th that has been a problem. Of course, you can peel that off uh, for that time. And that brings us to the third problem, which is it is not easy to reinstall. Every time, think of uh, privacy screen cards as whatever that 10 bit last protector you have on your phone, right? If you remove that and stick it on again, yes, you can do that, but maybe it will create more bubbles. It can easily get dirty. These are uh, these are very prone to this creating bubbles and air, air, air bubbles. So you have to be really careful and have to be an expert in it to install it properly. So yeah, it is not easy to install. Then the fourth one is it can be tough to get the right size. So if you, you we have monitors, laptop screens, and mobile phones available in various sizes and privacy screen guard protectors, th those manufacturing companies can't, uh, they, 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 they will create screen guards for uh, some phones or devices which are popular, but if you have a special size or if you have a new model, of a monitor or if you like to say have a new widescreen monitor or a new phone with a different aspect ratio, basically you have to buy something bigger and maybe cut it with your with the scissor. And that's not ideal, right? Uh, so you get the idea. It's not easy with, with this physical ones. And that's why I thought, hey, maybe there should be something, a software version, right, of the privacy screen guard. And that, that is what OWASP Snow is. Basically, when you enable Snow, and just like uh, when, when you, you, you must be knowing dark mode, right? On the websites, if you enable dark mode, suddenly it changes colors. Similar to that, if you turn on snow, the entire screen will get blurred, text and pictures will get uh, illegible, you won't be able to read them. But then if you move your mouse cursor on top of, of the elements that you want to read, uh, whatever immediately be, uh, underneath that cursor becomes visible. So you would be able to read that portion over there. So someone looking over your shoulder, they would, even if they are looking at the screen, they, they need to see where the mouse cursor is moving and read and what is underneath that. So you have some protection. So say for example, you are logging into your bank account and you already know what your bank balance is. So you don't have to hover your cursor on top of that. So somebody, standing next to you wouldn't be able to read how much balance you have. So a similar, same thing goes for say an email ID or phone number displayed on the web page, right? So all of them we become blurred and nobody would be able to read them. So the advantages of using a software version is first snow is free you basically enable this and you, you don't have to actually go ahead and purchase it. Second, it won't affect viewing angles. So you can turn off snow easily uh, as well. So if you want snow, you, you just click a button. If you don't want the snow, don't not to be on. It's again, you just click on a button, that's it. 
also size doesn't matter. The Snow software is like, it, it, is, it is basically a JavaScript. So basically uh, whatever your screen size is, it, it can shrink or uh, expand. So viewing uh, the size of the screen is not going to affect the experience of the privacy, right? So that those are the those are the advantages of using a software version in this case of S Snow. Now, now you know what uh, is of S Snow. You also know what are the pros and cons of using a physical version of privacy screen, and also uh, what are the advantages of using uh, the software version, which is of S Snow. I'll quickly pause here before moving on to the next section uh, of the presentation to see if we have any other questions on Hua. Hua. Okay, looks like I don't have any questions, so we will uh, move on to the next part. I want to say that Snow won't give you 100% privacy. So even if you have this Snow turned on, it is not 100%, right? If you are in a coffee shop and is connected to a random Wi-Fi, which is controlled by an attacker or random insecure Wi-Fi, Snow can't protect you there. So Snow is just protecting what is on your screen. Even on the screen, when, when you talk about the screen, say for example, you are talking to somebody, uh, like a, you're chatting with somebody and you are typing something on the keyboard and somebody, uh, the, only your screen is protected. So if somebody looks over your shoulder to see what you are typing on your keyboard, they, they can still, based on your finger movement, they can see what you are typing and Snow is not going to protect you over there. Uh, so th those are the issues with, the, with, the, with, the, with Snow. Similarly, if, some, if you are entering a pin or something, you still need to hide it, right? Other, other, or if somebody is recording what you are typing or, or if there's a CCTV camera somewhere grabbing your screen or then they would be able to go back, zoom it up, uh, watch it slowly and see what was underneath your cursor and would be able to read those content, right? So in, in those cases, no, it's not going to help you. If it was a physical screen uh, privacy guard uh, it would have protected you from CCTV attacks because uh, CCTV would be in a different angle, would be looking at the screen from a different angle. And since privacy screen guards is going to reduce the viewing angle, it can protect you there. So that's, that's the difference between a software version and a physical version. Now, third question, what is this ancient equipment? I'm looking for the answers. Uh, there are four options. It is a phone. B, it's a Morse code machine. Three, it's an encryption device, encryptor, or it is a music player. I will see if anybody have any answers. I'll pause for a second. If you know the answer, just type A, B, C, or D. All right, so if you have answered it's a phone, you are correct. It's an ancient uh, telephone. I, I see the right answers in the uh, answer. Thank, thank you, Eric. So yeah, it is a telephone. Uh, why we are talking about telephone, I'll, I'll, come, uh, I'll come to that in a bit. Now, fourth question, what are these two people do, doing? You, again, you have four options. They are making a new thread. B, they are waiting at the fishing, finishing point for a runner. So there is a marathon or sprint happening and they're waiting at the finishing line so that somebody can uh, hit those uh, ribbon or thread, right? Third option is C, uh, they are talking to each other. Fourth option is uh, D, they are talking and thinking. Okay, so uh, I have a right answer again. C, they are talking to each other. So this is called they are communicating, right? They are using what is called a tin can telephone or a lover phone. Most of you have done the same thing using uh, paper cups and uh, some threads when you were a kid. Uh, maybe you still do. So th 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 those, uh, those are very familiar to us. Uh, why I'm discussing about that is that uh, is 
it's another that leads to another question what does both of them have in common from a privacy standpoint uh, so what does an ancient telephone and this tin can telephone or lover's phone have common from a privacy standpoint so the answer is they have privacy built into it uh, there is a reason the telephone has an earpiece instead of a loudspeaker uh, even with the lover's phone one has to place it on over their ear to uh, hear what the other person is saying it is not like uh, you uh, put it over there and everybody around you can hear it, right? So they have privacy built into it. And th those are ancient stuff. Um, how about the software and hardware we design these days, right? Uh, they don't have, uh, many of these software and hardware are not designed uh, or designed with privacy in mind. Uh, there, there is a comment uh, that says you could easily intercept the calls uh, with ancient telephones and even with uh, lovers' phone, yes, that is correct. So they they uh, yeah, they have those issues, and I, and sadly we have those issues even now uh, with uh, latest technology and, uh, and stuff. But yeah, we at least we have we have some controls, right? So yeah, it is good. Uh, we, we are there. So uh, what I'm saying is that. Uh, we, we should be having uh, a shoulder surfing protection uh, built in in our software or hardware. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, now you know, uh, we already discussed what is of us now. So now you know what is of us now. Uh, you know the difference between a physical privacy screen and WASPs now. Uh, you know how we used to design technology with privacy in mind. And then you now you know also know what is the importance of privacy in uh, today's software, right? I'll quickly check who are to see if I have any other questions before moving on to the uh, next section within the presentation. All right, I don't have any, any other questions, so we'll move on to the next section. So right now, OWASP Snow is available on web, Windows, Chrome, and Firefox. Uh, so if you are developing a website, uh, that, that is the first portion. If you are developing a website, we have a, a Snow JavaScript available. I will give you more details in the upcoming slides. If you are using a Windows laptop or desktop, then you can, you, there is a nice uh, software, Snow software. It's an experimental version, but it is available on Chrome and Firefox. So you can, we have uh, browser extensions or add-ons available all of them are free and open source for sure so one thing i want to plug in here is that initially when i developed OS snow it was only uh, on it, it was just a web version and chrome version i present before presenting in virtual appsec uh, virtual appsec is a conference i wanted i presented it in a small conference near my home in in, in canada and one of the attendees said, hey, I can port the Chrome extension to, into Firefox. I can create a Firefox extension for OS Snow. And I was like, yeah, great, go ahead and do it. And Tobias, who was an attendee, went ahead and uh, he created that Firefox extension. That's how, that's how we have a Firefox extension. Uh, similarly, my brother said, hey, I, 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 I like this project. I can create one for Windows. And he created the Windows version. Uh, so, that is the beauty of OWASP uh, and open source, I think. When I, I, basically OWASP you know, was, a, was my need. I wanted privacy when, when working on my uh, laptop or, or when I'm surfing web on my phone or whatever. And I, 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 don't know, I created that extension and I was using it personally. And at, at one point of time, I thought, hey, maybe I can publish it and maybe some people will get uh, it will be useful for them, right? I open sourced it, but uh, but no, it was not getting anywhere. And I was like, hey, maybe I should promote it to uh, so that people will know such a project exists. And I presented it in OWASP Vancouver, and that led to uh, a nice Firefox extension, and that led to a Windows version. So uh, 
that's why I love OWASP. So if you have uh, uh, great ideas like this, I think you should at least put out the idea somewhere so that uh, people can contribute to it, right? There, there are lots of talented folks uh, here in OWASP and, uh, and actively uh, available in the information security industry. So that's the beauty of it. And I, I just want to mention that. Now, OWASP Snow is not available in Mac, uh, iPhone, iPad, uh, Linux, or, or, or in Android. And maybe if you are a developer uh, on any of these platforms, maybe you can help this project by porting uh, or creating a new OWASP Snow version for any of these platforms. Uh, there was also one requirement that OWASP Snow currently works based on a mouse cursor, right? Where you move your mouse, mouse cursor. And that means somebody needs to move their cursor to read what, what is underneath uh, that cursor. And it, it raises accessibility issues. Some people may not use uh, trackpads or mouse. They may, maybe they will use keyboard uh, or they will just use touch screens, right? So in that case, uh, how can we, we can't we can't say hey we are not entitled to privacy because you are using a keyboard to navigate no no we should not do that we, we should not discriminate discriminate people so that is one thing that i want to address so if you have any ideas for that uh, you are all welcome i i am open to hear those ideas um, that this is that is the next thing i'm going to do i'm trying to see uh, what are the accessibility softwares that are available out there and I can integrate Snow with them. Uh, so yeah, so that, that research is still going on. Basically, I want Snow to be the next dark mode. Uh, when, when I see dark mode being adopted by lots of softwares out there, uh, lots of phones, uh, hardware and uh, software, every, everyone is jumping into the dark mode bandwagon. And I want Snow to be there because our privacy uh, is, is of utmost importance. Now, I talked about the web version. So if you, are, if you have a website and you want, you really care about your uh, customer's privacy and you want Snow available to them, there's a privacy Snow extension, uh, sorry, JavaScript available. Uh, you can go to privacysnow.com and you can get this uh, piece of co uh, code. You just add that to your website, um, include it using script SRC, then you can have a button somewhere on your website uh, with uh, on-click privacy snow or something of that sort. And that function will trigger snow to be on and off. So maybe you can use that on your website uh, after heading back from this session. Or you, if or if you have a website that you wish it, it had of us, you know, maybe you can talk to them and see if they can integrate Snow. Now, if you are using Google Chrome or Firefox, uh, we have Super Snow and Snow Lite two extensions available. Uh, you once you install them, you can see this light, nice little icon on top. If you click on that, uh, Snow will get turned on. Everything will get blurred. If you click on it again, uh, it will uh, be turned off. If you are on Windows, uh, download our Windows version and run, run it and it will go to the tray. It will get minimized. Many people have said that, hey, I've run the tool and nothing is happening, right? So when you run the tool, it is uh, going to start uh, and go to tray. You have to go to tray and right click on it and uh, turn on the snow and then snow will uh, be on, and if you want to turn off, you can turn it off. One nice thing about the Windows version is that it, unlike the browser version, it gives slightly more uh, features. Uh, it it, uh, it gives you more granular controls. The other problem with web version is that uh, if you are using Google Chrome or Firefox and you are using Snow, it is available on Chrome or Firefox, right? And if you are using some other desktop software, Snow is not available there. Uh, but if you are using the Windows version, every every app is covered, right? So that, that is uh, the advantage of using uh, the Windows version. It is still experimental, so you may face some issues here and there. 
the source code is available if you want to modify it. But if you report that back to me, uh, my brother is working on that. So maybe I'll ask him to fix it. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, let, let me know. Now, now you know uh, where all you can use now or, or where you can't use now. Uh, you, you also know how OWASP and collaboration can help us, right? Uh, in improving privacy or in improving information security. I will take a quick look in Whoa to see if I have any more questions before going to the uh, next section within the presentation. No questions yet. All right, thanks. So where all you can use Snow? Uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's something uh, which is obvious. Say for example, if you're at home and you are buying a surprise gift for your spouse and you don't want spouse to know it, then, then you can use no, yeah, even at home. Or if, if you are at work, you are creating some a new uh, groundbreaking technology, whatever stuff, and you don't want your coworker to know or some competitor to know, you can use no on your, on your laptop. If you are commuting to work, using any public transport, chances are that uh, you, somebody may look over your shoulder to see what's happening on your phone or tablet or laptop or whatever. So if you, you can snow, use snow over there, uh, th there's an interesting piece there. Why, why I created OS Snow in first place, right? So when I started my career, uh, I, I used to work in uh, Delhi and I used to take Delhi Metro every time. It's a, it's a Metro train and I used to uh, go in the morning to the office and we'll head back in, in the evening to home. Uh, and it, it is usually rushed. There are lots of people. Uh, and sometimes you'll be sitting on your chair and looking at your phone because you have a lot of time and you are going through the phone. And, some, uh, and many times when I'm in the train, I can see that people are looking over somebody's shoulders. It is easy when Somebody sitting and some uh, and checking their phone. Somebody standing can easily look over the other person's shoulder and see what is on the phone screen, right? Phone, tablet, or laptop. So I have seen people peeking and performing shoulder surfing, and I was like, uh, okay, there, there should be a solution. And I and th then I did some research and I came across all these privacy screen guards, but then I was not. Uh, I do not like the idea of installing a privacy screen card only to affect the viewing angle so much. I wanted something easy, that something you can easily turn on and off. And that led to the creation of our asp snow, even though it was not immediate. It took me eight or 10 years because I was like, hey, uh, I know this solution, but it's, it's a silly solution. That's what I thought because somebody is going to come up with it. So it's, well, maybe I'll wait and maybe I, will, I, I should search and find it. And I, I did lots of uh, search on Google and Bing and I did not find any other active projects uh, uh, doing this, right? Then I was like, okay, uh, fine, I, I will create something. So I created it, I open sourced it, and now we have more people contributing into, into it and creating, uh, porting into different platforms. So yeah, we have that. All right, uh, so, before, looks like there are no other questions. So I think I will move on to the final conclusion of this presentation, which is you deserve privacy. So you deserve snow. Please head over to privacysnow.com and download snow for your mobile, for your browser or whatever. Thank you, Abhi. That was great. I'm going to tweet that actually so that we get more eyes on snow. Um, and thank you to everyone who attended. If you have any questions, we are still in the Whova app um, accepting any questions. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for your time. And thank you, Abhi, for such a wonderful presentation. That was very informative. And I loved seeing um, snow and hearing about all of the future plans for it. It would be great to see uh, some developers working on a Mac version for it. <laughs> sure, sure. We all deserve privacy. Yes, absolutely. So thank you again, everyone. Have a great rest of your afternoon.